Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion about conduction heat gain calculation through sunlit wall due to sun shining. In today's video we are going to talk about conduction heat gain due to the sun shining on the exterior walls, roofs, windows, and the capacity of the wall and roof to store heat. So before we start to estimate the conduction heat gain due to sun shining or consider examples, we need to know first about sunlit surfaces, sun rays, solar angle changes throughout the day, time lag and solar effect. Therefore most exterior surfaces of a building when they are exposed to direct sunlight during some portion of the day, Solar heat energy is generated by the sun and radiated to Earth. So radium heat is similar to light that travels in a straight line and can be reflected from a bright surface. So both light and radium heat can pass through a transparent surface, such as glass, and yet neither can pass directly through an opaque or non-transparent surface, such as a brick wall. So when the sun's rays strike an opaque surface, however, a certain amount of radiant heat energy is transferred to that surface, resulting in an increase in the surface temperature. The amount of heat transfer depends primarily on the color and smoothness of the surface, and the angle at which the sun's rays strike the surface. When the sun's rays strike the surface at a 90 degrees angle, the maximum amount of radiant heat energy is transferred to that surface. When the same rays strike that same surface at a lesser angle, less radiant heat energy is transferred to the surface. The angle at which the sun's rays strike a surface depends upon the latitude, the time of day, and the month of the year. Due to the rotation of the Earth throughout the day, and the Earth orbiting the Sun throughout the year, the angle at which the Sun's rays strike the surface of a building is constantly changing. This varies the intensity of the solar radiation on an exterior surface of a building, resulting in a varying amount of solar heat transferred to the surface throughout the day and throughout the year. As mentioned previously, the assumption that the surface is completely shaded does not account for the additional heat gain that occurs when the sun shines on a surface. Solar heat, therefore, must be considered, as it constitutes an important part of the total cooling load of most buildings. The walls and roof that make up a building's envelope have the capacity to store heat energy so this property delays the heat transfer from outdoors to the space. The time required for heat to be transferred through a structure into the space is called the time lag. For example the heat that's transferred through a sunlit wall into a space is the result of sunlight that fell on the outer surface of the wall earlier in the day. So curve A shows the magnitude of the solar effect on the exterior wall, and curve B shows the resulting heat that's transferred through the wall into the space, and this delay in the heat gain to the space is the time lag. So the magnitude of this time lag depends on the materials used to construct the particular wall or roof, and on their capacity to store heat. So let's get started conduction heat gain through sunlit surfaces and talk about cooling load temperature difference, CLTD, and estimating conduction heat gain through the west facing wall due to sunlit and sun shining. There is a factor which is called the cooling load temperature difference, CLTD, which is used to account for the added heat transfer due to the sun shining on exterior walls, roofs, and windows, and the capacity of the wall and roof to store heat. The CLTD is substituted for delta T in the equation to estimate heat transfer by conduction, where Q equals U times AN times the cooling load temperature difference, CLTD. So this particular table which includes CLTD factors for the west facing wall similar to the type used in our example building, 
Therefore, it should be noted that the data in this table are based on the following assumptions. So notice that the CLTD increases later in the day and then starts to decrease in the evening as the stored heat is finally transferred from the wall into the space. Therefore, this table is giving you the CLTDs for sunlit walls, 40 degrees north latitude, July 21st, and dark colored surface. So you can find more tables for various wall and roof types as well as correction factors for applications that differ from these assumptions, can be found in the 1997 ASHRAE Handbook Fundamentals and ASHRAE's Cooling and Heating Load Calculation Principles Manual. So the wall in our example is classified as wall type 9, at 4 p.m. at hour 17 in this table. So the CLTD for a west-facing wall of this type we use 22 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that, even though the actual dry bulb temperature difference is only 17 degrees, 95 degrees minus 78 degrees, the sun shining on the outer surface of this wall increases and the CLTD or the effective temperature difference will be to a CLTD of 22 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why we substitute CLTD for delta T using CLTD instead of in order to determine the heat gained by conduction through the west-facing wall and the roof. So our U factor is 0.06. So we have a U factor of 0.06 BTU per hour square foot degrees Fahrenheit. The our wall is equals 500 square feet. The CLTD we is 22 degrees Fahrenheit at 4 p.m. and at tower 17. So the equation we will use is Q equals U times AN times the cooling load temperature difference. CLTD. O only CLTD is substituted for our delta T which was 17 degrees in our previous examples. So Q equals IU factor which is 0.06 times the net area of our wall 500 square feet and times our CLTD which is 22 degrees that gives us 660 BTUs per hour. So this is the estimated BTUs per hour due to conduction heat gained through the west-facing sunlit wall which occurs later in the day and begins to increase in the evening time. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching this video. If you like to learn more about HVAC then please go ahead and subscribe to this channel.